You can see anti-Israeli protests have continued this weekend. Can you imagine hearing the protesters shout, kill more Jews, and shamelessly backing and supporting the barbarians? Shame on these Hamas. young people. Well, right and shame on in our country. Looking these at a remarkable scene that played out in New York people who would yesterday. allow their countrymen over in there. Bridge. And shame on and us for letting these people come into our country. This is part of the problem with President Biden and Obama both opening up the gates and letting everybody come in here with all of this anti-Jewish stuff. And look at the stuff we're having to put up with right now. Shamefully. Gina correspondent Jonathan Surrey live now with more in this unbelievable, shocking display of total inhumanity. Jonathan? Uh, Eric, thousands of protesters took to the streets in Brooklyn calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Many of the protesters say they are simply trying to prevent additional deaths and injury to Palestinians as is is Israel... Yeah, I asked for a ceasefire after you killed the and, and attacked the on Israel Israelis. ...on October 7th. We support Palestinians' rights to defend themselves from this ground invasion, um, and we call on the U.S. to demand an end um, to Israel's ground invasion and Israel's bombardment. Um, Jump in the lake, gal. Head back to your country. And kick them out of our colleges and universities. We don't need them here. Shamefully. That's what it's all about. Student protesters from other colleges brought their rally there for a reason. Tulane is a 44% Jewish population of students, so it seems like they're specifically targeting uh, such a university to, you know, promote hate and to antagonize Jewish students and to frankly scare us and make it so that we're afraid to go to class. And it's deeply concerning. This is all organized. Saul Alinsky radicalization tactics. In Israel to our 9-11, but that's an analogy that may not resonate as much with today's college students realizing that many of them... Thanks to Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden selling out our country, opening the borders to all kinds of... Sorry, Terrorist. Yeah, Eric and which are now organized in our cities. The world as well. Hundreds of thousands rallied in cities across Europe, the Middle East, and this Asia. is all planned and organized. In London, Jeff Paul is dictatorships. So Jeff, it seems like it got pretty big there. Tell us more. Yeah, big here and all over the world as thousands and thousands of people gathered to voice their opposition to what's happening both in Gaza and in Israel. And sort of the main theme throughout many of these demonstrations is this call for a ceasefire in the war. Now, one of those locations where we saw demonstrations today was in Madrid, Spain. This is what it looked like there. As you can see, crowds of people with Palestinian flags and at times chanting in Spanish, quote, it's not war, it's genocide. Some had signs calling for peace, while others were heard calling Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu a, quote, murderer. It is a shame what is happening to the you're a, people. You're the shameful person, buddy. Some European governments are even supporting, supporting your dictatorship. Citizens should take to the streets and mobilize so that at least there is a ceasefire. Now, elsewhere in the world, a large group protested in Beirut and Lebanon. There was a sea of Palestinian and Islamic group flags as thousands gathered outside the Al Amin Mosque in the Lebanese capital. And a similar pro Palestinian demonstration was also held in India. Protesters there say the world is simply standing silent as people in Gaza are bombed, and many are now left without food, medicine, and the essentials to live. <laughs> Now back here in London.
London, several were arrested on Saturday after an estimated 100,000 gathered to protest the ongoing war. Several were arrested on suspicion of hate crimes, and as many as two people were arrested for allegedly assaulting police officers. One of those police officers, RFL, had an injury to the head. It was so bad he had to be hospitalized, but we're being told that he is in good spirits and is expected to make a full recovery. RFL? Well, that is good. Jeff Paul reporting live from London. Jeff, thank, thank you, Jeff. This is our second independence war. We are fighting on defending our homeland. We will fight and not retreat. But that's Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday calling the Hamas war on his nation a battle of the entire human race against the barbarians. That's right. So many world leaders, including and wake Trump, up and realize it, Democrats. Here you're, well, you're playing right into the hands of these South. people. And Erdogan has even raised the possibility of Turkish forces potentially backing Hamas in Gaza. With someone who knows firsthand what it's like uh, to be in battle for Israel, who's a member of the Israeli Special Operations Commandos Forces, uh, he's with us now, and then went on to uh, become the Prime Minister of Israel, Naftali Bennett, former... Listen Israeli closely to what this gentleman has to say. Now, it's Bennett, the truth. You were in an elite IDF commando unit. You went behind enemy lines in Lebanon to try and take on Hezbollah rockets. What is that like, and what are, are your colleagues, the young men and women right now, who are in Gaza? What are they facing, and, and how are they able to try and defeat Hamas? Well, indeed, it's uh, the highest uh, duty of, uh, of a soldier is to go out and uh, fight to defend his people. And uh, everyone in Israel, from left to right, religious and secular, we're all united in a full understanding that we have a full-blown ISIS Hamas state on our border that wants to annihilate us. That's and right. We have to uh, defeat Hamas and bring total uh, victory. Nothing less than that. For those who Amen. Have call for ceasefire, it's uh, tantamount to asking America to cease fire right after Pearl Harbor. Uh, we were attacked, but the war is not about what happened. It's about preventing the next time. And now all Israelis understand that we have a savage, barbaric uh, regime that has to go away. Absolutely. Yeah, and it better go away here in America, out, too. Uh, we better vote out he didn't say, uh, oh, by Andy people, Bashir and Joe that, Biden, we're, period. We're not going to do anything. We're going to forget about it. FDR didn't say this is a day that lives in infamy, so we're going to go home and listen to the radio. You know, what do you, th what do you think of some of these protesters on the streets of, uh, of our country? I mean, they, I heard in my own, with my own ears, kill more Jews from the river to the sea. That means get rid of your nation. Wipe out Israelis. Wipe out Jewish people around the globe. What is your reaction that these calls were freely heard in the United States of America? Shamefully. You know, there's those uh, people who feel they, they, they're doing something very useful by chanting from... Uh, the Mediterranean to the river, from the sea to the river, uh, let Palestine be free. That means essentially wipe out Israel, because all of Israel sure is it does. between the and sea and And we better and wake up river. to it. So uh, they think that by chance, before we lose our country completely to these is let's murder dictatorships, the in, in the state socialist, elitist dictatorships is so what they are. They are confused. And anti-God uh, people. I, I want to emphasize that the and godly principles. Here, I mean, they lack. People in Paris or in uh, London or in Madrid, if they don't understand that this is not a fight, a uh, domestic Israeli fight, because we have no territorial claims on Gaza. This is a fight between life and death, black and white, uh, good and evil. That's right. And we have to win. If we don't win now, it's going to hit the rest of the world in its own capital. Absolutely. It Believe it, folks. At 80 years old, I've about seen a lot of these things. And I'm just telling you, it's coming our way. And all you got to do is look at these city streets and these big cities and see how organized they are. Enough supplies They're against America. Against Israel. Cash They're pro-Iran and pro-Palestinian. They have stored away months of food, medicine, water, everything 
that the people of Gaza need, but they're keeping it for their terrorist purposes. That's right. Your reaction to that and the fact that the Jewish state is the one blamed for this? It's unbelievable that for every act of murder of Hamas, then we have hypocrites around the world that are blaming the Jewish state. Hamas is murdering not only the Jews, but its own people. How is it doing it? By preventing some of its people from running away from harm's way, by using its own boys and girls as human shields, by using hospitals and schools as terror bases. Day after day, every single Gazan citizen that is killed is killed by Hamas. Hamas is conducting genocide against its own people in order to conduct genocide against us. Right. And that's what this is about. There's no middle ground between uh, good and evil. Hamas needs to be eradicated, and we're going to do it. And finally, Prime Minister. Uh, and we better the help them. Arab states are, are supporting the Palestinians and supporting Hamas. Privately, though, we hear there's other views. Do you believe this will be a final turning point that potentially Qatar, which has said it's reviewing its connections and ties to Hamas, do you think when this is over, that will finally change and that we will have a potential new Middle East without Hamas? That's our job to eradicate Hamas, but we need more of clarity for that. We need time. This is going to take time. Uh, no one uh, said uh, that the uh, World War II would end in uh, five days. It might take weeks, it might take months or years, but we have to eradicate radical Islamic terror that is a true and present threat to the free world. Amen. And we're going to do it, and I ask that nobody ask us to stop in the middle. Right. Radical Islamic terror threatens the rest of the world, not just you, but Europe and us. Natalie Bennett. Blood, uh, blood calls from him and blood language about the situation. We thank you. We thank you for joining us. Always good to see you, sir. Thank you. Of course. Right now. Minister Netanyahu calling the IDF's latest moves in Gaza, quote, the second stage of the war. Now, he's not calling it an invasion, and so far the maneuvers appears more limited than some experts had predicted. According to the New York Times, Israel's Apparent decision to hold off on a full-scale invasion, at least initially, aligns with suggestions from Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. Let's bring in Republican Congressman Carlos Jimenez of Florida, a member of the House Homeland Security Committee and Armed Services Committee. Uh, Congressman, thank you for uh, joining us. I'm going to get to the hostages, very important subject in a moment, but I want to start here because the IDF says that it responded to three rocket launches from Lebanon and struck Hezbollah terrorist targets. This all happening last night. Fire exchange still taking place. Are you concerned that this war will expand? I think everybody should be concerned if this, uh, if this war expands and uh, got to look toward Iran as probably the perpetrator, probably the puppet masters of everything that's happening in the region. Uh, so, yeah, it would concern me because then it would, uh, you know, fighting a two front war is a little bit different than uh, putting all your energy into what's going on in Gaza. I know that the Israeli forces are up there and are prepared for anything that may be coming from the north. But, uh, but you know, the more uh, it's a, it's a one-front war, the better it is for Israel, the better it is for us, too. Yeah. And, of course, Congressman, you know, meanwhile, the U.S. has positioned a formidable fleet of assets in the region. Jen Griffin, Jen Griffin just reporting uh, this hour, uh, the U.S. says Eisenhower has arrived in the Mediterranean Sea. So. Is it possible, of course we don't want this, but is it possible that the U.S. could get dragged into military action? Everything's possible, but I hope not. I think that uh, the Biden administration so far has, uh, um, has actually had constraint, uh, restraint in some of, uh, some of their actions. Um, I know that, uh, that uh, they've been, our forces have been fired upon uh, from Syria and from, from forces there, and that we have struck back. and. And we need to make sure that whatever, if it happens again, it keeps happening, that we do strike back. But uh, we don't want to be seen as uh, a part of, of a problem there. If uh, we have too heavy a hand, then uh, it could be an excuse for other people to get involved in this conflict. And right now, uh, it's uh, between Hamas and Israel and some Hezbollah. If we keep it that way, I think uh, it's a much better outcome. And it's, I think, actually, 
the way it should happen is just try to keep it as contained as possible. Although I do believe that Israel has every single right to uh, to go into um, into Gaza and and destroy Hamas, which is really should be the final lockdown. There should be no Hamas after this uh, military action. Amen. So and, and meanwhile, if, if this is the second stage of war, it is less aggressive than expected. Might that be designed to create room for mediation to release the 230 hostages? Uh, you know, I, I think so, but uh, but also, you know, they've got a they've got a tough road to hoe here, and and um, you know, of all these tunnels and also, I think they really have to map this out strategically and and try to take this uh, down uh, piece by piece and then basically move them out, move them out, move them out until they no longer exist. Look, the, uh, the hostages, are, that's another question. Um, this is what Hamas wanted to do, take a bunch of hostages so that they could slow down Israel's advance against them and use them as human shields like they use their own people as human shields. I think uh, Israel understands this and Israel is just gonna do what it needs to do at the pace that it needs to do it, uh, so that, and they, they see it as the way to be successful. Um, they have to be successful, they have to win this, and they have to destroy Hamas. If not, we're gonna see this uh, again in the future. Uh, the only road to, to lasting peace is with the destruction, utter destruction and elimination of Hamas. Amen. And let me billboard what you said, which is that Hamas, let's not forget, Hamas is holding people as human shields, even Palestinians, oh, yeah. let alone the Americans and foreign nationals. So with that and billboard, and as I said, and Israel, of course, has the right to defend itself, and the barbaric attacks by Hamas are unforgettable. But I do ask, and this is the question I think uh, some people do want to know, not sure there is an answer for it, but how does IDF annihilate the terrorists? without killing more innocent Palestinians? I'm not, look, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure it can, uh, uh, and that's unfortunate, but if you don't eliminate Hamas now, it'll just cause more lives in the future. Uh, and so, yeah, it's a difficult choice. Israel's doing everything in its power to make sure that it, it targets Hamas, Hamas fighters, Hamas, Hamas terrorists, and, uh, and try not to kill the civilians. But Hamas puts its own civilian population you know, at risk. Hamas is the one that, you know, puts their munitions underneath hospitals and churches and and, uh, and other public buildings. And, and Hamas is the one that's keeping their people there. And so, look, at the end of the day, um, I know there's gonna be innocent loss of life. I mean, war is, is not clean and there is always innocent loss of life. But uh, Israel has to take the action that it needs in order to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And that not only protects Israeli lives, but it will protect Palestinian lives in the future, because every single time that Hamas strikes Israel, there's a retaliation. And you know what? Innocent Israelis die, innocent Palestinians die, and the and the and the you know the perpetrator of all this are the actions that are done and perpetrated by Hamas. Hamas is the is the head of the state in this instance. We know the big head of the state is Iran, and Iran has to be taken care of you know in a, in a separate way. But in this instance, it's Hamas. That's who we need to take care of. That's who Israel, Israel needs to take care of uh, to avoid this innocent bloodshed being, being uh, spilled in the future. We will leave it right there. Congressman Carlos Jimenez, thank you very much for joining us. And we'll be right back.